If you've been following the saga of the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K, there, and the Core Ultra 7 265K and Core Ultra 5 245K, you'll know that Intel has finally fixed these processors after many months of work, and we've carried out reviews of these three processors. And while they might not be the greatest processors that Intel has ever produced, they do have their merits. So should you happen to be in the market for a Core Ultra 9 285K, you're going to need a motherboard. And we're going to start at the high end with a review of this MSI Meg Z890 Ace. And I'm going to warn you now, it's expensive. Priced here in the UK at £640, including VAT. Before we dig into the features and performance of the MSI Meg Z890 Ace, we're going to take a look at the accessories and we will see whether or not this motherboard does indeed offer Ascendant crafted excellence. We have a Wi-Fi 7 antennae, an easy connect cable which goes there and offers you USB to ARGB and PWM headers so you can easily connect a cooler or fans or some such but really AIO. That's one of those front panel connector cables that goes to the front panel headers and then connects to your case. SATA cables, thermistors for sensing temperature, more SATA cables, a driver for your M.2 mounts, M.2 extensions for RGB, yes, regular RGB, extension for ARGB, M.2 mount, and a USB flash drive, which contains drivers, so you can get your system up and running nice and easily, even before you have an internet connection. You get plenty of accessories, but when you're spending over 600 pounds on the motherboard, you blooming should do. Okay then, let's take a look at the motherboard itself. Let's start with our initial impressions of the Meg Z890 Ace. Doesn't it just look absolutely great? Then again, as I've said already, it costs a lot of money. It should look great. It should be great. We lay down our open test bench, which as you can see was provided by MSI. And we take a quick tour of the board. The rear I.O. panel is fully featured. Under these extensive heat sinks, we have a mighty VRM. We have a large heat sink on the primary M.2. We have a heat sink over the rest of the M.2s. We have three exposed PCI Express by 16 slots. Sadly, things aren't quite as good as they might first appear, although they are pretty good. Let's take these three PCI Express slots. The top two slots are Gen 5 by 16. However, if you populate the second slot, they both become times eight. And that doesn't do a lot for me. To my mind, MSI would have done far better to have simply removed that second PCI Express slot and just had a single Gen 5 by 16. The slot at the bottom, despite the fact it's a by 16 mechanically, is actually Gen 4 by 4 and that is powered by the chipset. You can see that our Seasonic Focus power supply with white cables is connected both at the top at the EPS, at the side at the 24 pin. We have an additional power connector uh, which is 6 pin next to the 24 pin and we have an 8 pin at the foot of the board. Plenty of extra power is supplied to the board. Obviously that's aimed at extreme overclockers. That isn't really a part of the Core Ultra 200S experience. My advice is run it on auto and you'll be happy. Let's remove the M.2 heat sinks. Off with the top one and off with these. And here again, we see something that's not quite as it seems. So the primary M.2 is Gen 5, that's great. The other four are described as three Gen 4s and one Gen 5, depending. However, this M.2 requires lanes from the Gen 5 graphics slot. Run it on Gen 4, you're good. As far as I'm concerned, we have one Gen 5, four Gen 4s. That heatsink is over the Z890 chipset. 
we have many features to examine in addition to all those M.2s and expansion slots, loads of headers and connectors, micro buttons and a debug display next to the 24 pin power connector. For the VRMs, both the controller and the smart power stages are by Renesas, and the configuration is 24 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 times 110 amps. Memory support, it's DDR5, it supports CU DIMMs, maximum capacity is 256 gigabytes, and the speeds can be as high as 9200 mega transfers. The heat sinks on the VRMs are linked with dual heat pipes. The motherboard is ATX in form factor and uses an eight layer PCB. And when it comes to input output, we have 10 gigabit Marvel ethernet. The Wi-Fi is Intel Killer Wi-Fi 7. For ports and connectors, we have two Thunderbolt 4s, which are the equivalent of USB-C 20 gigabit per second if you don't use Thunderbolt. We have two USB-Cs rated at 10 gigabits per second and a front panel connector for USB-C rated at 20 gigabits per second. There are 11 USB Type A's rated at 10 gigabits per second and internal headers for four USB Type A's rated at 5 gigabits per second. You also have headers for four USB 2.0's. And there are eight PWM fan connectors. Let's assemble a test PC and get the Meg Ace up and running. And yes, if you've already watched my reviews of Core Ultra 200S processors, the hardware will be familiar. Power supply is Seasonic Focus GX1000. It's the latest ATX 3.1 spec, although the name Focus might be familiar. It's the fourth generation. The SSD there is a Crucial T700, so that's PCI Express Gen 5. Memory. G-Skill Trident Z5 CK, so that's CU DIMMs, and rated at DDR5 8200. Snap on the heatsink on our SSD. Our graphics card is an MSI RTX 4090 Ventus 3X triple fan, as you can see, 24 gigabyte. Let's install that. In our roundup of MSI Z890 motherboards, I've referred to the various easy build features, such as the way the graphics card snaps into place and indeed can be released nice and easily. And you've seen the M.2 heat sinks, the way they snap on and are easily released. And you'll note so far, no tools required. Our CPU cooler is an MSI Mag Core Liquid i360, so 360 mil AIO. I've used it so far for all of my testing of the Core Ultra 200S processors, and I also used it when I retested uh, the Raptor Lake processors. And it's worked absolutely superbly. Let's apply some Arctic MX4 thermal compound. And yes, I am aware it is upside down technically. However, when it's on a test bench, this is much the easier way to go. Finally, I require a screwdriver. Hook up the pump. And plug in the fans, which are all daisy chained together. And the final thing, some power for our graphics card. And there we go, ready for action. In the BIOS of the Meg Z890 ACE, we see a huge number of options and the overclocking section is absolutely packed out with features. The thing is you require none of these options. The key thing is to choose an appropriate power profile and we recommend the default Intel profile. After that, you want to set fan curves, enable XMP for your memory, and you're good to go. Perhaps you're wondering why my look at the BIOS there was so brief and the explanation is quite straightforward. It has taken months for Intel and the motherboard partners to sort out microcode, BIOS updates, ME firmware, and all sorts of bits and pieces to make this platform work correctly. It does now work correctly. Messing around in the BIOS, it's a poison chalice. My advice is don't do that. Of course, you might think differently, in which case, good luck to you. Here at KitGuru, we have tried working inside the BIOS to change performance, and we have come up dry. 
The best thing in my opinion, as I've already said, is to leave well alone and leave everything on auto. And having said that, let's take a look at performance. In our charts, we're keeping an eye on the blue bars, which represent the three core Ultra 200S processors. And in Cinebench 2024 multi-core, we see the MSI takes the core Ultra 9285K clear to the top of the chart. It's a similar story in Cinebench 2024 single core. Again, the Core Ultra 9285K at the top of the chart, while the Core Ultra 7 and Core Ultra 5 essentially tie further down the chart. Geekbench 6 multi-core. It's the MSI at the top of the chart with the Core Ultra 9285K and the Core Ultra 7265K is only a couple of places behind. The combination of MSI Meg Z890 Ace and Core Ultra 5 245K are rather further down the chart this time. Geekbench 6 single core is a bit of a peculiar test for some reason dominated by AMD and we see the Z890 Ace and Core Ultra 9285K in sixth place. CPU power consumption. This is significant because Intel has cut power draw by a huge amount compared to Raptor Lake. The Core Ultra 5 245K only requires 135 watts under load. The Core Ultra 7 265K draws 220 watts under load. And the Core Ultra 9 285K a mere 235 watts. As you can see, these days the Core i7 14700K and Core i9 14900K draw 253 watts on default power settings. In the past, we've seen these processors drawing 300 or 350 watts. With the Core Ultra 9 5K. The significant thing about that 235 watt power draw is that that is about one tenth of the capability of the VRM on this motherboard. 24 times 110 amps is more than 2,500 amps potentially, and that means this motherboard can supply over 3,000 watts to your processor. As this chart shows, that's not only overkill, it's utterly ridiculous. In 7-Zip we see some curious results. The top of the chart we have the Ryzen 9 9950X and then we have the two Raptor Lake processors Core i9 and Core i7. The MSI Meg Z890 Ace and the Ultra 9285K come in in fourth place and the MSI motherboard and Core Ultra 7 are a couple of places behind that. The Core Ultra 5 does poorly in this test. ADA 64 memory bandwidth. The top of the chart is dominated by the MSI Z890 Ace and the three Core Ultra 200S processors. The explanation is these processors are using that DDR5-8200 CU DIMMs memory. In other words, they have speed on their side. You can see the advantage the CU DIMMs give you over the Raptor Lake processors running on DDR5-6800. And then we move on to gaming tests, starting with a synthetic test, 3D Mark Timespy. All these processors are using our RTX 4090 graphics card, and we see top of the chart the Core i7 14700K, closely followed by the Core i9. The MSI Z890 Ace and Core Ultra 9285K, a short distance behind. In Far Cry 6 at 1080p on Ultra Preset, we see the combination of Core Ultra 200S and Z890 Ace doing rather poorly. The three blue bars pretty much at the bottom of the chart. It's a better story in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora at 1080p on Ultra Preset. We have the top two positions filled out by AMD, and then the next three places are taken by Core Ultra 200S running on the MSI Z890 Ace. It's a reversal of fortunes in Assassin's Creed Mirage at 1080p on Ultra High Preset. You can see the three blue bars are fairly far down the chart. While the scores are slightly disappointing, it's clear that the Ultra 9285K on the Meg Z890 Ace, with an average of 171 FPS, is still delivering a good gaming experience. In Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p on Ultra Preset, the top three places are filled out by AMD, but the Core Ultra 9285K on the Z890 Ace is only one FPS behind the Ryzen 9 9950X. And we finish with Total War Pharaoh at 1080p on Ultra Preset. The Core Ultra 200S processors do fairly poorly in this game, and as a result they tarnish the MSI Meg Z890 Ace. If you're looking for a new chair, then definitely go and check out Boolies.co.uk. They offer a whole host of gaming and office chairs that come in a variety of different finishes and different colours. And we come to my conclusions about the MSI Meg Z890 Ace. Pros, the good points. Top of the list, solid quality and an epic VRM. Secondly, you get dual Thunderbolt 4, 
but if you don't have Thunderbolt products, it'll run as USB-C 20 gigabit per second, but Thunderbolt 4 is 40 gigabit per second. And in addition, you get loads of USB-C and A. Third is that for connectivity, we have 10 gigabit per second ethernet and Wi-Fi 7. Cons, the negative points. The price of this motherboard is extremely high, and the same is true for the platform overall. And secondly, the lane sharing for M.2 and PCI Express is annoying. The M.2s, we've got one Gen 5, and we've got a load of Gen 4. The PCI Express expansion slots, we've got a Gen 5 for your graphics, and we've got a tiddly Gen 4x4 for everything else. Nice and straightforward, that message. What they've done here is a bit complicated. Overall, this is a worth considering. It's a 7 out of 10. The board itself is absolutely fine. It's the Intel processors that are a problem. I've already recommended the Core Ultra 7 265K, and this motherboard is complete overkill for that processor. Remember to check us out at kitguru.net on the web, and also we're on TikTok.